Today, I wanna to talk to you about a very common issue that comes up on home inspections, and that is exterior outlets that are not GFI protected and or do not have weatherproof covers. In the case of this outlet receptacle right here, it does have a weatherproof cover, but it is not a GFCI protected outlet, which nowadays these are all required to be. This particular home was built in the early 1990s before that requirement was in force. Um, and now most, if not all home inspectors will tell you this outlet needs to have GFCI protection at the source. In order to do this job, you're gonna need a screwdriver. This is a flathead electrician type screwdriver. It is coated in plastic. The only exposed metal is here on the very end, so it makes it very hard to shock yourself or cause any kind of arcing with this screwdriver. So I'd recommend getting one for electrical jobs around the house. Uh, this is a combination wire cutter and stripper, so you'll need something like this as well. And then this is a GFCI type receptacle. Um, this is rated for outdoor use and I got it on Amazon. I could not find a brown one uh, at Home Depot or Lowe's. And the trim of this house is brown and I wanted to uh, match the exterior outlet to the trim. And then this uh, weatherproof outlet cover. Uh, you can get these in lots of different styles and configurations. I chose this one mostly because it is also brown. The other tool that's an absolute must when you're working on anything related to an outlet receptacle is one of these. Uh, this is an outlet receptacle tester. Uh, it has three lights on it and it has a little guide here that shows you uh, when you plug it in uh, what, what the lights mean. And in this case, what this is telling us is this outlet is currently wired correctly. You have two, uh, two orange lights and the red light is not on. Um, if you had different light configurations here, that could mean different things. Most importantly, what this is showing us right now is that this is on and we don't want to start this job until I kill the power to this receptacle at the uh, breaker panel on the other side of the house. We're not gonna show you that part today. If you don't know how to uh, kill the power to an outlet receptacle, you should probably figure that out before you attempt something like this. Uh, maybe we'll make another video about that, but definitely if you're not familiar with uh, the way that uh, circuit breakers and power works in general, I would say you should hire somebody to do this job. But if you are familiar, this is very easy to do. Okay, so as you can see now, there are no lights uh, illuminated on this tester, which means that there is no power going to this receptacle. So it is safe to um, open this up, remove the receptacle and replace it. The other thing that I know about this receptacle is that it is on a 15 amp circuit. So this GFCI receptacle that I purchased is rated for 15 amps. Do not install a 20 amp uh, receptacle on a 15 amp circuit or vice versa. Make sure you match the GFCI to the amperage of the circuit. And again, if you don't understand that, uh, contact me and I'll explain it or uh, call an electrician to do this for you. But this is a very common issue and um, if you own a home, this is something that you you know, would probably most likely benefit from learning how to do. And also if you're getting ready to sell your, your home, you might as well take care of this before the home inspector tells you to, uh, to do it. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do on this is to remove the uh, outlet receptacle cover, which in this case, because this is an old, um, older style outlet, older style outlet uh, with uh, this, this configuration, it's got the uh, two holes in it versus the uh, newer, uh, what they call Decora style outlets. Uh, so I can see that somebody's already been in here because these screws are mismatched. So somebody's uh, been here before me, but we'll go ahead and uh, get this out of here. So we got the screws out and now we are going to pull this out of the wall and boy, we see that we've got all sorts of old, uh, old gunk in here. Um, and so before I go any further, I'm gonna get a hand vac and I'm gonna clean all this up. Okay, so that is more or less cleaned up. 
and we can see that we've got two, uh, two separate uh, lines coming into this box. Uh, we've got two black wires and two white wires. It's hard to see because these white wires are so dirty, but these, these over here on this side are the white or common wires, and these are the uh, hot wires. So um, what we need to do is dis disconnect this and then uh, figure out one more thing before we install a GFI on here. I'm just gonna cut all of these, and this wire here is the ground. I'm gonna cut that, and then I'm gonna cut these two commons. And so that's our old receptacle. It's not GFI protected, it's not weatherproof, and uh, yeah, no good. It's out of here. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna separate these wires into their respective uh, pairs here. So we have these two wires uh, coming in and these two wires coming in. And what's going on here is one pair of these is carrying the power to the receptacle and one pair of these is carrying the power away from the receptacle. So one side of this is what we call the line and the other side is the load. A load is another outlet, a light or something like that. So what we have to do is actually figure out which is which. And um, the only way I know to do that is to uh, strip these ends and then uh, test, test these wires again. So we're actually gonna need one additional tool here which you'll see in a minute. So we're gonna strip these wires uh, you're going to uh, select the appropriate gauge of wire on your wire stripper here. Because what you want to avoid doing when you're stripping wire is you don't want to score the copper because that makes it weak and it can break. Also, the other thing you want to pay attention to is um, there's a strip gauge right here that tells you how much insulation to strip off of the wire. I did it by eye, but uh, you can see that I basically matched the uh, length of the strip gauge there. So you just sort of line it up there and see how much you need to strip. Mark it with your finger and strip the wire. All right, so as I mentioned, we've got to figure out which, which of these is the line and which of these is the load. So again, the line is carrying the power to the receptacle and the load carrying it away. And that's not so important with this type of receptacle, but with a GFCI, it is important. You see the yellow tape on the back here, and that is covering the load side of this because there's always a line because you have to have power coming to the receptacle. But if it's the end of the line or something like that, there might not be a load on it. So a lot of you are probably saying, well, stupid. The top one is the top one and the bottom one is the bottom one. And I would say you're right, except I can tell that somebody's been here before me, so I have no confidence <laughs> that that was hooked up correctly. So I've got a different kind of tester now that I am going to um, test these, uh, these with. So I've turned the breaker back on, so this is now a situation in which somebody could get shocked, and I probably should be wearing gloves, but I'm holding the uh, insulated leads here, so it should be fine. And when I put um, my tester on these, one black, one white, if it doesn't light up, that means that's the load side. And if it does light up, like this side, this side should light up. Yes. Now I'm seeing the light on my tester illuminate. You may not be able to see that, but I'm seeing it. And that means that these two right here are the live wires. This is my line in. This is my load going out to the rest of the circuit. So I'm gonna go turn the power back off and wire this up. Okay, now I have turned the power at the box off again and I'm going to uh, test this once again, just to be sure. Now I could grab these and that would tell me, but let's not do that. Um, we're going to put the black one on the common and the red one on the hot. And I see that there is no light illuminating on my tester. 
which means that I have indeed, once again, shut the power off. So with that, we're gonna go ahead and hook this thing up. Okay, so on this type of receptacle, the connector is a screw. There's a screw terminal and there's a plate. So you need to make sure the wire goes in um, with the plate uh, touching the screw because this plate is gonna, little plate in here is gonna clamp down on the wire and that's going to uh, make the connection. So we're gonna go ahead and do that with the hot side, inserting this into here. And when you're doing this, the gold screw, always with the black wire, and the silver screw on the other side goes with the white wire. So we're gonna tighten this down. This is not the final tightening, this is just initial tightening. And then we're gonna do the same thing on this side with the silver screw and the uh, white wire here. Insert behind this metal plate. Okay, and again, that is not the final, uh, final tightening, but we're going to uh, give it a little wiggle and give it a little more uh, torquing down on these screws here because you don't want these to be able to wiggle out because when people, when people insert and remove plugs from outlets, they tend to wiggle. And so this could wiggle a little bit and you don't want these to be able to come out. So the next thing we're gonna do before we attach our uh, load side is to attach the ground. And you don't ever have to really worry about a ground. It can't shock you, but uh, the circuit is off in any event. And the ground screw in this receptacle is on the bottom. And so we're gonna uh, just insert, insert the wire in like so. And we are going to hold it while we tighten the green screw. The green screw is always the ground, no matter what you're doing. So now we're ready to do the, uh, the load wires. So we're gonna get rid of this yellow sticker and we're gonna take our black load or our hot, oh, again. And these are already tightened down for me. So we're gonna un untighten them or loosen them, I guess would be the correct way to say that. We're gonna put that in there. and tighten it down. And you can see why you want the power off because I'm grabbing this thing and if this thing was on right now, I'd be getting a little jolt. So again, we're gonna loosen this side. We're gonna insert the uh, common wire. Actually, I'm gonna pull this through here so it doesn't Okay, we're gonna put that in there. And again, I'm a little, actually I'm fine with that. This is just fine. There we go. And now we're gonna tighten it down. Okay, so now I'm really going to give this a good twist on both sides. And I'm going to give it another wiggle just to make sure everything's good. And one final check of all these screws. And after you wiggle them, they will turn, they will tighten a little bit more. So just be aware, you want these things not over tight, but tight enough. Okay, so now this is essentially done. Of course, we have to put it all back together and install our new weatherproof cover. So I'm going to um, basically bend bend the wires back in here. So now that we have our receptacle roughly positioned, we're gonna get our weatherproof cover. And it comes with a few different plates. This one is gonna fit um, on this style outlet. 
And this thing comes with its own screws. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna discard the screws. We're actually not gonna discard them. We're gonna remove them and save them because sometimes you need these. But we're gonna use these screws to, uh, first we're gonna snap this plate into here like so. And then we are going to, <laughs> we're going to snap this plate in like so. There we go. Hear a nice little click when that happens correctly. And then we're going to position this over the receptacle. And we are going to start installing our screws. And I have got a regular Phillips head for this. And we're gonna go right through the uh, cover and right into the uh, screw hole on the uh, receptacle box. So this is all gonna basically become one big piece here. And it's gonna be nice and secure. And we don't wanna tighten too much until we are sure that the screws are going in where they need to be. So we got our screws lined up and now we're just going to drive them in the rest of the way. And some people like to use a power screwdriver. I like to work with a regular, regular screwdriver for electrical stuff just because I don't need additional uh, worry about power and batteries or anything else. And if you really wanted to be cool about it, I suppose you could uh, put a level on this thing to make sure it's level. I'm gonna let my camera person tell me whether it looks level. I'm getting the thumbs up. And so we just continue to tighten this down until it is firmly against the wall. Now that this is installed, you can elect to have it open uh, to, the, to the side or up and down. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and opt for the uh, up and down option. So we push this little pin through here and there we have it. And then you can knock out this uh, this little tab right here, if you want to run a cord up in here and have it be closed, that's the nice thing about these. So let's go ahead and plug our tester back in. It's still off. I'm going to go turn on the power and we'll see if we did it right. So now the power is back on and we can lift this up and oh my goodness, the lights aren't on. Does that mean it's not working? No, because when you first install one of these, you have to push the reset button. So now it is showing you that it is on. It's wired correctly on the bottom. It's wired correctly on the top. And we have this little green LED that will forever shine, letting us know that this is hooked up correctly. So that, in a nutshell, is how you install a weatherproof exterior GFCI outlet.